My name is Stephanie Christina Badalino. I was born as Michael. I remember putting on my mother's slip and loving the feel of the silkiness against me. I'm Ryan Brannon. I was born Julie. When I was 13, I told my parents that I wanted to have a sex change operation to become a boy, but they freaked out and completely talked me out of it. My son, he said, Mommy, I think Daddy's a cross-dresser and he's gay. It was freak show dad. I remember saying to her, I'm sick, I'm sick, there's something wrong with me. Well, I finally started my transition from Julie to Ryan when I was 36 years old. I've had three surgeries and spent thousands of dollars in the process. We've gone into debt so that I could change my gender. Now, come to grips with the fact of who I am, and that's a transsexual woman. I'm coming to Trinidad to have gender reassignment surgery. I'm having my P turned into a V. I'm not finished yet. The last one I want to have done, just taking out the vagina so that I could stand and urinate. And that's, that is just a big deal to me. Daddy, how you doing, honey? This is Trinidad, Colorado, the sex change capital of the world. Since 1969, more than 5,000 people have made Trinidad their last stop on their journey between genders. Are you sure you want to go through it? I guess I'm sure. I'm Marcy Bowers, MD. I'm someone who's been through the transition process, and now I'm performing the surgery myself, transforming trans women and men as they become their true selves. This soldier will never fight again. <laughs> it's Daddy. How you doing, honey? And these are just a few of their stories. Tom, find me a, a metal rake. Many people think that transition is about the surgery going from male to female. But the real transition is when you take that first step out into public with that little mini dress that you've been saving up and go off to Target to buy toilet paper. Now that, so to speak, takes balls. I'm sorry, we're knocking your bolts oh. loose from here. Yeah. You don't want to come up one bolt short. No, I, won't. I got the buzzer. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. When you're ready to risk losing your friends and your family, that's when you really transition. Stephanie Badalino is coming in for genital reassignment surgery. She's a well-accomplished insurance executive. She has a 12-year-old son. One of the things that's a challenge for trans people going through all the process is it's not easy to keep your family together and happy and well-adjusted. It's just not always easy on children. Good morning. It's day 13. I've got 13 more days until I become a full woman. Uh, today's the gay and lesbian pride run in Central Park, as you can see. It's going to be my first attempt at running as the woman I've always known myself to be. This should be interesting. I guess my earliest indication of, you know, being attracted to things feminine. Oh, I couldn't have been more than eight or nine. As I moved into junior high and into high school, I was always active. I really threw myself into sports. I was running from something. Because I felt if I ran fast enough, it wasn't going to catch me. I ran the marathon in New York City twice. And at the time, it was a tremendous personal achievement, you know, it really was. But today, as lumbering as I was, it eclipses that. Because I'm finally doing something that I love as my true self. I think the marathons that I ran when I was Michael was a metaphor for me running away from who I really was. I was uneasy on a deep level with who I really was. I was married because I thought it was the right thing to do at that time in my life. I remember this voice inside my head going, what are you doing? You, you can't be doing this. But I kept fighting it back. Well, this is the early 90s now, so the internet's starting to really kind of take hold. And then I started realizing, oh my God, there's people out there like me. 
I met my friend Diana, who's been living as a woman and supported and guided me through all of this. I found myself building a wardrobe, you know, doing it all on the sly from my life. Then my wife found pictures of me. I remember saying to her, I'm sick, I'm sick, there's something wrong with me. And my wife said to me, she said, I know this isn't going to go away. She goes, I know this is a part of you. As my transition really moved on, I've come to grips with the fact of who I am. And that's a transsexual woman. I'm coming to Trinidad to have my surgery and to, you know, complete this phase of my transition. It's all good. It's all good. Oh, my God. Diana, my dearest friend in the world. I can't imagine going through this by yourself. <laughs> to handle all that stuff by myself? No way. I need my kindred spirit with me, and that's Diana. <sighs> I can't believe I'm here. I don't know why we click. I don't, I really don't know why we click so well. I try to uh, keep it light, you know, especially now. This is crossing over the bridge, you know? That's what this is all about. And there's people over there on the other side of the bridge. Well, they're my sisters. Yeah. yeah. And they're happy and they're joyous. And, yeah. and they're saying, it's your turn now, Steph. Yeah. It's your turn. <laughs> it just means so much to me. It completes me, you know, it really does. I'm so glad I'm here. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm 74 years old. And I have Parkinson's, and I don't think I can have surgery, realistically. So this is a way for me to have the experience, even at this late stage. Hello. Hey, there. Marcy, how are you? Stephanie. Oh my God, good it's good to see you. Here are all these months and ages. Oh, good to see you. What I usually say to people is that this surgery is art more than is anything. I'm the only U.S. surgeon that does this in just one stage. For me, it was the number one thing I wanted to change in the surgery. Right. Um, to do it in one certainly has a huge advantage, and, um, and reducing all those other costs and the anesthetics and the incisions and the recoveries, that's part of it. But also, I think it just looks better. It's amazingly close. I mean, it's really true that, you know, time heals all wounds, and this is, this is certain, certainly a wound. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not a womb. But a wound. You're not going to be able to have children after this, so. Oh. You know, not my expectation. Thank you very much. My 12 year old is enough. That's fun. Now, did he come with you? No. He's in camp. He knows I'm here. He knows I'm having surgery. Um, he knows that I'm having my P turned into a V. My son was born in 1994. January of last year, he said to my ex, he said, Mommy? I think daddy's a cross-dresser and he's gay. It was freak show dad. He'd see me and he would not want to be with me. And it's no wonder he called me freak show dad because I probably look like, you know, my hair's growing out, my nails are growing, my eyebrows are done. What gives? All right, let me put your heels up on here. All right. Feeling my fingers are very intimate, so sorry to be it's quite, all right. quite so friendly with you, but okay, so it's your job, good perineal body, pretty average, uh -huh. certainly not too long, lots of skin to work with, so we'll have, we should have no trouble. You'll do, you'll, you should do very well. Okay. Okay. I love you. Thanks for being there for me today. Oh, you know, was, Are you kidding? I um, was there for you. I, I know I'm not going to get a lot of sleep. It's really here, you know. I, I mean, this is day one. Tomorrow is day zero. Um, but I'm ready. I'm, I'm really ready. So physically, it's easier to transform a man into a woman because we can do it in one step. Transforming a woman into a man is more difficult because it can take us a variety of different procedures, not all of which have been perfected. And that can lead to complications and a disappointment as well. 
Ryan Brown is a female to male transsexual who had a hysterectomy and testicle implants last year. However, one of the testicles shifted and is causing him pain, so he's back to have that fixed. What's for supper, honey? We're having a scattered meatball. Your favorite. I'm Ryan Brown. I was born Julie. I remember my mother telling me that they tried to put me in a dress and then I just threw a fit because I said, little boys don't wear dresses. So um, right there, I was boy from get-go. Growing up, I could run like a boy. I could throw like a boy. I didn't act real, uh, you know, macho or anything like that, but um, I wasn't real feminine either. When I was about 13, I saw this program on TV about sex change, and it just seemed to hit really close to home, so I knew that's the direction I wanted to go. I remember going up to my mom and dad, I remember exactly going up to them and saying, I want to be a guy. And my dad said, no, you won't like it. You'll have to have shots for the rest of your lives, you'll have to do this, you'll have to do that. And that scared the hell out of me. I didn't have all the facts, but he scared me good enough that I pushed it away. I basically just thought, well, gay. I guess I'll just, I'm lesbian. If I commented on a man's looks, it was because I wanted to look like that, you know? It's like, oh, wow, cool, you know? I love the sideburns because I wanted to have them, you know? But I did that for a long, long time, for, gosh, maybe 10 years or so. As I got older, I was becoming more bitter. I was a little more uptight. Well, I wasn't happy as a woman, but I wasn't ready to become a man until I met Kim. She was just, she was just the best. For one, her looks grabbed me right away. I mean, she's got the prettiest eyes, and she never smoked, she doesn't drink. She was like all around good girl, you know? And I'm just so opposite. Julie seemed a little wild. It's the completely opposite of what I was. To me, it was an adventure, because I felt like I was playing with fire. I found that exciting, and it just kind of grew from there. We were together a year, and I wanted to marry her, I wanted to be with her. Um, I wanted to be who I was, and um, I just felt I could with her. And it wasn't too long after that I said to her, what would you think if I had a sex change? Ha, 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 you know? And, of course, she laughed. She didn't think anything about it. And then I, I'm like, I'm serious. What would you think? I could tell the way she was talking and that this wasn't a passing thing. This was something that she really wanted and I didn't want to stop any of the progress. At first I wasn't sure, one, of what we needed to do, the money, the whole, you know, the whole thing. I let him do all the research, then she would explain things. She would say, oh, this doctor's doing this, and then I would call and find out all the information and uh, made a fairly good team about it and the rest is history, I guess. When I started taking hormones, my voice got deeper, um, hair started growing all over my arm and my body, and my clitoris got bigger, and unfortunately, I started going bald. To me, Julie physically is gone. As far as personality and the inner part of Ryan, it's still the same person that I fell in love with. <laughs> I will kiss you. <laughs> in fact, it's probably gotten a little better as far as He's more comfortable with, with himself, so that makes him a little more confident. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I love him even more for that. Well, it's cost us thousands of dollars just to get me to this point. After all of this, we'll have a balance of 20000 due. Huh? So that's this credit card. That's one. We were... Just with credit cards alone, we had a debt of 70000 I I dragged us down financially. I, I put us pretty much in the hole because of all this, but I, I didn't know what else I could do. Through this whole process, the thing that's been wearing on me was the financial stuff and worrying about him being happy. As Julie, he just wasn't happy with who he was. And as soon as he decided that he was going to be Ryan, it's just like everything fell in place for him. And I'm going to figure out any way we can to get him finished. I was here a year ago for a hysterectomy, testicle implants, and medioplasty, which moves the clitoris more in line to where the penis should be. 
one of my testicle implants didn't settle in quite right, so I'm back here to have it adjusted. But what I really want is a vaginectomy. That, more than anything, is what I need to feel more complete. Hopefully today, um, after talking to Dr. Bowers, I will talk her into taking out the rest of the female parts. She hadn't done the last time, and I, I really, really want her to do it this time. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Yeah. So you're your usual strapping stuff. Oh, yeah. As <laughs> <laughs> I remember, one of the testicles was a little high. Is that, is that what you're well, saying? Well, actually, one's... It's not even visible. It's oh, it's up pulled back. It's, it's way, way in. tucked up in there. Uh huh. And and actually, that causes pain sometimes. I imagine um, the phallus too. It just kind of hides. Too much, huh? Mm -hmm. What I think the ideal thing would be to do is to really do some good stretching. You know, grab it. You ask any old man, you you know, gravity and time. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a little flip thing down there too. We don't know what that is. Well, the flip thing we take care of. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, and that's the main thing, right? You know, I can't emphasize how I hate that okay. female area. I just, yeah. you know, start begging, start begging. I don't need um, <laughs> See, now, is there any way at all? Close it off? To close it off? To get rid of it, to kill it, to do whatever? problem is that if you don't extend the urethra, then you can't do the vaginectomy even because you'd be closing off your urinary stream. Okay, I see. But I saw I get it partially done anyway. I'll sign whatever you want, please. <laughs> I just, that's what I hate is having that. I just, that's stressful. Well, let me have a look at you. Let me see what we... Okay, good. That'd be very good. Let me see what the little flipper thing is. <laughs> well, I can't wait for that. <laughs> I currently don't do the... Uh, urinary hookup simply because um, it's uh, fraught with a lot of complications. It looks like it's a penis, all right. You, you might have to leave me a tip after playing with you like this. Right? <laughs> Jeez. You're not hung, you know, like they, some of the guys say hung like a chihuahua. You're not bigger <laughs> than that. I mean, that's that just... But this guy needs to be down here. And that's what's going back up. You know, we can close this. I, I can take all the lining from inside here mm -hmm. and take that all out. Okay. But it's a it's a tough, tough job. It's very difficult and it's very bloody. So what I would say right now is that we take off that little tiny ditzel, just smooth that out. And the flipper? The flipper thing. Mm -hmm. And then and bring this down and anchor that down where it's supposed to be. I think the other is not worth the, the risk to you. All right, so you should you should check in tomorrow morning about ten. Okay. I'm disappointed because as long as that's down there, I don't feel like a complete man. I'm hoping maybe I can get a hold of another doctor some months after this and try again. You know, see if I can get the rest of it completely finished. So I'll just have to hang on until then or beg somebody for, <laughs> for enough money to get it finished. Counting down all the way to zero. My new birthday. Yep. When I first came out, you know, back when I was married, I always knew my journey would all culminate in today. Because I know how I am. You hope for it. Good morning. You do whatever you can to finance it, to mentally prepare and emotionally prepare for it. You want one for posterity? You're killing me with that camera. <laughs> you know, and it's always out there on the horizon, you know. You know, sometimes you think it's never going to get here. And then suddenly it's right in front of you. You're going to go you're gonna great. You're ready. Thank you. I want you. I'm going to stay with you all the way to the operating room. As long as they'll let me. Hey, Good luck. Take about three nice, slow, deep. Relaxing yeah. breaths. She drift off. Okay, so we'll see you in a little while. We'll be right here with you. Dr. Powers, we are ready to proceed. Okay. 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 Okay.
Dave, what kind of drugs did you take this morning? <laughs> okay, so we're underway. Ow. 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 Anesthesia's working. Ow. Jeez, you're like in rare form, I can see. <laughs> when you figure it, this surgery, we're messing potentially with, you know, two sources of elimination and people's sexual function. It's like, you'd think that this would be the most important surgery in the world, wouldn't you? Amazing how much they'll pay for faithful surgery when this surgery is so much more important. Separate the components of the, of the, uh, of the shaft or the phallus or whatever you want to call it. What do they call it in Texas? <laughs> <That's big laughs> no, don't ask. Big don't big tell deal. me that. We're going to get rid of the twins. All right. The twin. <laughs> I just inverted the we penile skin. Ended. We just, the penile skin is now separated from the, the shaft. And, you know, and it's sort of, first time you see it, you go, oh my God, I had no idea that's what was in there. But the nerves to the, to the glands are the nerves that are going to innervate the clitoris and so all we need to do now is just get rid of the erectile portions of this because it's too much. We need to take all this off otherwise when um, patients are sexual this area swells again this, has, this is erectile tissue and you just have to take it off so it's a common thing in the, re in the revisions that we do. And we'll leave some and then we have a, a clitoris that's homologous with a, a natal clitoris in that gun. Um, they both have similar nerve and arterial supply. And so the, the function is pretty close. Oh, come on. Uh, Betty? Hey, I've been waiting to hear from you. Well, I'm chewing my nails. Yeah, you're gonna be here for a while. I'll be here all, uh, all day. But this is the last third of the procedure, and this is where it all comes together. And we're basically now trying to recruit tissue that's going to be used in the final repair and create important structures like the clitoral hood and the labia minora and the neo-urethra. So these last parts are really critical in the total, in the final appearance, because it just all comes together. So we're done. The only two scars you're really going to see are these two outer scars here. Because everything else is kind of hidden, the hidden hair inside. Back in, those won't be very prominent. No, that's amazing. So this packing stays in now for a full week. It's actually got an antibiotic coating to help reduce the chance of infection, which is shockingly rare. Thanks, everybody. We're done. We're in clothes again. So that's a good sign. How are you? Are you nervous? You bite your nails? Yeah, I've been no, my she's nails. all good. She, had, she didn't have any problems. It seems so long. Well, it is long. Tell me about it. So she's well, in recovery. Excellent. Yeah, she's in recovery. Let's go down and we'll see if we can find her. Hello. Hi. Pretty please? She okay? Yeah. Miss Stephanie. Hola. You woke up in Mexico? No, no, no. It's Dr. Bowers. We're all done. We're done. Yeah, it seems like you just start drifting off, and before you know it, it's all done. We're all done. Oh! Oh, you can embarrass her with this picture someday? Oh, my God. The experience of being here with Stephanie was marvelous for me. So I got something out of it, too. Didn't have to pay the 16000 <laughs> but I would willingly pay 16000 and more if it was realistically possible for me to do it. Nobody knows that you don't have, you know, when we look at each other, we don't know whether someone's right. got this genitalia or that genitalia. Yeah. And, you know, and, and you and I know you're a woman in, you know, you're a woman in God's eyes. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I got my breasts. I did that. You look wonderful, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you got a bow on the package doesn't mean it's a better present. <laughs>Two days after surgery, we get patients up and out of bed and walk around. The reason for that is to avoid uh, complications such as blood clots 
or muscle atrophy or even sore points just from laying around for a couple of days. And they've had 48 hours for the sutures to start to set up. So generally they've taken hold and there's not really a risk for sutures breaking. You can always start but our cases where people have been too eager to get out of bed and they've popped stitches. How are you feeling? I'm doing okay. Okay, I'm gonna leave you to your own, okay? Yeah. do that sitting down. Don't, don't push it on. I thought that she probably shouldn't be doing all the things she was trying to do the first few minutes, really, out of bed. There's just some things a girl just has to do. Don't push it. Thank you, please. My shaving cream. I, I use the... This one? I pushed myself way too much getting out of the shower. You know, right away I wanted to, you know, blow dry my hair and throw some makeup on my face. I was standing too long and I think I caused some bleeding. Oh. I tried too much right out, of the, right out of the box and I just wasn't ready for it. Lesson number one. Yeah. Chill the hell out, Stephanie. Patients wait their entire life for a vagina and then a few drops of blood come out and they're really ready to call 911. <laughs> Hello, Miss Sunshine. How are you? I'm doing okay. <laughs> it was. We had a patient a couple weeks ago and she brought me this t-shirt that had this mutilated, you know, something that looked like a vagina and oh, the statement underneath it with all, you know, the, the stitches and all of that. Mm -hmm. Underneath it, it said Frank and Pussy. And I thought, <laughs> Is that no, what I don't you think, think of my work. I don't think mine looks like that at all. Even with the stitches and the oozing and the bandages and all that stuff, it's still, it's like, wow, you know, wow, that's me. It's very surreal. It is, you know. Meaning where you were to, you know, to this. In some respects, Marcia hasn't all hit me yet. I mean, it has, but I think as I heal more and as I just start to live more, you know, it's gonna even, there'll be, you know, it's the little things, you know, that'll hit me and I'll be like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I really do have a vagina now, this is wonderful. <laughs> I'm really disappointed because this is my fourth surgery and the process still isn't complete. Now it looks like that. Okay, and then from my understanding, that's supposed to be out like that. And it's not. And I thought that this part was the penis. I didn't know that this part was. So this was always in there and I just thought, oh, okay, we'll do, you know, whatever. But when I tried, to, I did try to pull it out once a little bit and it almost caught like on a piece of skin or something. Can't she circumcise it a little? <laughs> Did you see what I'm doing? This has been a hard process for both of us. The bills, the surgeries, the disappointments. Call me. Call me. But Ryan never lets it get him down and that's one of the many reasons why I love him. The physical stuff doesn't matter to me. It's the sense of humor that Julie had, which Ryan still has, and that's why we're together. Our day at the office? Yeah, it was a long morning. Alright. You're gonna be you're gonna take good care of You're a good woman. Any more flippy things we're supposed to take off? No. Just that one flipper. Flippy. <laughs> I'm gonna try to I'll, I'll see what I can do to get a little bit of more building in too. Yeah, I, w I was trying to Sorry, pull it once, but it's like it caught or something. I don't know if it comes out all the way. Scar, you know, let's see what I can do to you. Okay. Shouldn't be in too much pain. Excellent. Okay. But I'll hit the bars later. Yeah. You know? yeah. Last year, we did a hysterectomy and um, a metoidioplasty and a testicle implant. 
procedure. That was his transition. The metodioplasty allows the penis to look like a penis. The procedure kind of completes in, in the eyes of the courts the idea of transition for FDMs. I mean, it's a small phallus, but it's a phallus. What we had done is we put testicle implants in. It'd be nice to get these to drop more, you know. To, but as it is, that looks like an uncircumcised male phallus. I mean, look, it's even got it's even got schmegma. Ooh, yummy. <laughs> Yum. That was a nice little surprise. Yeah, he's a manly. He's a man. There's no doubt about it. Can you let the cafeteria know it'll be about? Maybe half hour, 45 minutes for me. Uh, did you see what they gave me yesterday? Spinach loaf or whatever. Uh, it tasted like grass, and then I think it was spinach. Gotta watch out for spinach these days. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's baloney. That, you know what that means, though? Somebody took a crap in the spinach. <laughs> Who took a crap in the spinach? I'm gonna actually take it out and then replace it. It's just like breast implants. He said, he said, are those normal sized testicles? And I said, yeah, yeah. And big in fact. And just like male to females want larger breast implants because they think that's how every woman is. Sure enough, these guys sometimes want larger, larger testicles. testicles than really exist in nature. I call that phenomenon breast inflation for, you know, for the M to Fs, and then maybe this would be testicle inflation for the I mean, these are, these are big, wouldn't you say? They're not small. I guess we put the serial number, serial number up so he can read it, right? Sure. And I happen to be using um, permanent suture because I really don't want this ever migrating upwards. We went down to Solano's and Raton looking for cowboy boots made in China. Never been a Chinese Perfectly well said. You, can you imagine that? Some Chinese guy riding over the range. <laughs> Can you imagine like a Chinese guy in John Wayne's role? <laughs> hey, it's danger! <laughs> Put that gun down now! Go ahead, make my day! <laughs> this thing is mobile. It's out there. There isn't anything you can do with that. Unfortunately, that's probably going to be it. If there was not fat here, this would set out farther. Yeah. And so if you press the fat, you know, if you press the skin in and you suck the fat out, it comes out farther. Nothing you can do with that. Now then he said there was some called a flippy thing. And I'm looking for this flippy thing. Oh, maybe he wants these labia just like off. I guess I can take off this little bit of scar tissue here and then sew that together. So let's do that. Oh, oh Dave, Dave. Dave. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. Brian got a little twitchy during his surgery, and uh, it's, of course, it's something that we try to avoid, although it's not really a problem, and he's not likely to wake up and remember anything. Yeah. You getting a little antsy, too. Okay, we're done, I think. Uh, thank you very much. Have a very, very nice weekend. Hey. hey. Okay, so that was good. We did that. Good. That was really good. Yeah, we got it all. Fi we internally fixated it. Um, it should be rock solid, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> and then that little flippy thing. I think what that was was that old attachment to that skin. Oh, you know, the skin down it. below. So I just kind of bridged it so it's not flippy anymore. Not flippy. But he's got a good amount of length on it. It's just. What it looks like, and you know, he's even got smeg, he's, he's, he should clean that, he should pull that foreskin back, like the guys do. You'll see that the, there's that smegma in there, and it was kind of, you know, they say, you know, boys have to clean in that thing, so <laughs> he had a lot of it in there. He didn't know that, probably. He didn't, he's got to pull that back, because it, okay. you know, it comes out, I mean, it's a, okay. it's a penis, so <laughs> it's a, it's got to get in there.
and his toothbrush. No, 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 he's not. No. But he's pretty, he's pretty well hung. <laughs> he, I guys. think he finally got him convinced of that one, too. Woo. Yeah, I mean, they all want to have this big package, you know, well, his testes are usually not much bigger than that. Okay, well, I will uh, let him know. Okay, well, good, good. good to see you again. Yeah, hopefully, or I don't know, hopefully we won't be back, but... You well, you it's... always are welcome, and even just for a visit, just please, because it's always interesting here. I'm patiently waiting for this phone to ring. My son is at camp. I'm waiting for him to call. This is the first time I'm speaking with him since surgery. It's Daddy. All I want you to know is that everything was fine with my surgery, okay? I'm okay. I don't want you to worry about me. I love you very much. The biggest success for me is I still have my son. He accepts me for who I am. He loves me. He knows that I'm transgender. He understands, as a 12-year-old can, what it means, and he loves me, and I'm in his life, and he's in mine, and he always will be. You went to the Baseball Hall of Fame without me? Oh, man. Well, that's a trip. We underestimate what kids can can take in. How's your baseball coming? You know, they're used to storybook tales and, you know, imagination. <laughs> so changing sex is probably not all that big a deal. You got it, fucko. Hey, listen, this hospital food hasn't been the best either. You come down this slip and slide course, it's kind of cool. Don't, don't do it too hard. You don't want to put a hole in it. The fortunate thing in my case was that my son was just a year when I, that, you know, occurred for me. He's, he's really only known Marcy, and he's only grown up with Marcy. So that, that's allowed him to be completely consistent in that view of me. Daniel. All right, should we wash the car? Yeah. It makes me really sad to see so many other transgender people never, never have a relationship with their children. Talk about dirty. Either because the spouse is bitter and the custody rules don't allow them to be parents or are sort of a double standard. So for me, that's the thing I'm proudest of in terms of holding on to what I had. Don't blur up my butt. <laughs> um, it means more to me than my practice or my professional career. I want this thing to shine. So I get the packing out of my new vagina today. Oh. <laughs> I feel like the, the magician who mm -hmm. pulls all the different colors yeah. uh, handkerchiefs out of his hat. Oh my god, that's the feeling it feels like. What did you take out of me? No, I'm going to show you. I, I do got oodles and oodles. Oh, and mother of God, that was inside of me? Yeah. That's the close <laughs> to, 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 the, to the giving birth feeling. <laughs> Before Stephanie leaves the hospital, she has to learn how to dilate. Pat her down. Don't tense up because it's going to be worse. Just relax. The body's tendency is to try to heal itself by scarring raw suture edges together. So Stephanie is going to have to dilate three times a day so that she can keep those edges apart until the vagina is completely grown over. Now push it in yourself. You want to try that? You don't want to try it. Okay. What I'm doing now, I'll be doing three times a day for 20 minutes for the first three months. Yeah, you're doing great. Yeah. Good. Leave it there. Leave it there. So after you're done, just wash it and 15 minutes? Okay. And you have to dilate one time before you go home. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it feels like it's going in on an angle that, mm -hmm. like you just said, like it's going... There you go. I, for some reason I thought it would be going up, but it really feels like it's going down more toward, like my spine, yeah. almost. Okay, so that's, that'll always be the angle of entry, mm -hmm. if you will. Okay, yeah. just so I know. Okay. okay. Great. Do you want us to mark the spot? Yeah, <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's the only time I talked to her. <laughs> she said everything on the, the penis and everything, was, it looks good. She said there's a lot there. 
she said. As a, as a, as a boy, you need to clean in there. Uh, I, I guess I don't understand how I would do that. She mentioned a toothbrush, but then she was kidding. If I don't find out what it's like to stand and pee, I'm going to be frustrated as hell forever. I want that so bad. It's good getting out. It really is. The highlight of all of this is you receive your surgery letter, it's called, from Marcy. It's a notarized document that basically says Stephanie Christina Badalino is now female. And she's a woman in every aspect and should be identified as such in all documentation. This is the surgery letter. Okay. This allows me to start my new life. I'm anxious to hear what it says. Okay, it says, to whom it may concern, this letter is to certify that the above named individual underwent genital reassignment surgery performed by myself, Dr. Marcy L. Bowers, MD. The surgery was performed at Mount San Rafael Hospital in Trinidad, Colorado. The surgery was completed in accordance with the standards established by the Harry Benjamin International Gender Dysphoria Association, thereby completing the genital transformation process for this individual. What this allows you to do is go to DMV and they take the M off of the license and put the F on the license. Accordingly, all documentation should reflect this individual's current and final genital status of female. <laughs> so, I'm forever Stephanie, and it's a wonderful feeling. Her receiving her letter from Marcy, that was a very emotional time for her in particular, but also for me. I was thinking I would like to have a letter like that in my pocket. That was very emotional. She cried and I cried. I mean, we both, you know, a couple of crybabies sometimes. Violation set, very important. Different sizes. Rookie league, double A, triple A, major leagues. <laughs> In many respects, transition is about how you present yourself to the world. In your heart, you are the same person that you've always been. <laughs> and Kim understood that. She fell in love with Julie, and it was her love and support that gave Julie the strength to become Ryan. Take care. Bye. Call me. <laughs> but it's not always easy for people to make that transition. Now, Stephanie, on the other hand, she's had to do the same thing with her own son, and she's worked really hard to maintain that relationship as well. Hey, this will stay there. God forbid we have to do dishes by hand. Yeah, but look, see, it's all dirty. Because of the high expenses that we would had to put on the credit card to pay for the surgeries, we had to finally file for bankruptcy. No matter how I finagled the bills, there's no way we could make the payments. So it got to a point where we had to do the bankruptcy, and I accepted that fact. From that point on, the, my stress level just totally went down. <laughs> we were able to keep our house, the cars. Now we just basically have to come up with some alternate way of getting money to pay for the future surgeries. And that, that'll be tough. I'm not finished yet. Um, this is the last one I want to have done before I'm finished in my mind. It's just taking out the vagina and doing the urethral lengthening so that I could uh, stand and urinate. And that's, that is just a big deal to me. Price includes free revisions. See, that's almost like you get coffee with your room, you know? <laughs> I can see the end of the tunnel. I know Ryan's wanting to see the tunnel a lot sooner than it might be possible. Now that, oh my God. That is a hell of a shot. I mean, that almost looks like a biological male. I wouldn't call that real tiny. That is really impressive. We'll do and I'll do whatever we can to figure out to try to get that done. That would be excellent. Oh my god! <laughs> I'd go crazy. That'd be so great. 
how about mac and cheese for lunch? That'll work for you? Because you're the, uh, you're the mac and cheese king, you know what I'm saying? This was an, a groundbreaking, earth-shattering experience for me. It was more than I ever expected emotionally. And, and, and physically, of course. What's the directions? We need milk. What has been huge for me has been the, the emotional piece, the psychological piece. The... You know, when I look at my transition and I look at all the various things I've had to manage, you know, coming out at work, coming out to my family, coming out to my son, I look at that as my crowning achievement, in, if, if I may, because, you know, I, there was a time when I didn't think he'd be in my life. You know, that it was always going to be freak show dad. But it, it's not. And it's wonderful. Cool. Well, go ahead in. Today I don't have to pretend that I'm something that I'm not anymore. And that makes me a better father. No swinging of bats outside cages. Go in and... Unfortunately, society still has a bias against transgender people. And kids can be cruel. So his mother and I thought it was best to not show his face to protect him. Nice. I look at the days ahead with my son with such wonder and such joy. To explore the issues further and to engage in the debate, visit the More 4 website at channel4.com slash more4. Next tonight, we're given the